When your power goes out, it's usually not a big deal because it's back on within a few minutes. And worst case, it's out for a few hours. But what if those hours turned into days? And what if those days turned into weeks? Now you can say that will never happen, but the reality is the North American power grid is more fragile and more vulnerable than any of us would care to admit. So whether it's hurricanes in Florida, ice storms in Texas, wildfires in California, or the recent substation attacks in North Carolina, more and more families are facing extended outages. And in some states, rolling blackouts have become the new normal. In this video, I'll share our strategy for never running out of power when the grid goes down and doing it without going into debt. What got me thinking about this was a video made by a retired couple who took out a home equity loan to install a backup power system. They borrowed close to $20,000 and they spent a month building a large solar array on their property and a rack of batteries in their basement. They did all of the construction, excavation, installation, and electrical wiring themselves. It was really impressive and I applaud them for what they've accomplished, but very few people have the time, skills, or budget to take on a project like this. And that's what concerns me. A lot of really smart preparedness-minded people are totally unprepared when it comes to backup power because it's too overwhelming and it's practically too expensive. It made me wonder, is it possible to provide your family with backup power for several days, weeks, or even months with a plug and play strategy and without going into debt? I believe the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Let me explain our strategy. When it comes to backup power, there's two main categories, gas power generators and battery power stations. Now, generators offer a lot of bang for your buck, but using them as your primary backup has some real downsides. The first being fuel. Generators burn a lot of it. And if you want power 24-7, your generator has to be up and running 24-7. And trying to find fuel in a blackout is probably the last thing you want to be doing. Whenever there's a shortage of any kind, people tend to do really stupid things. The best thing you can do in a blackout is stay home and keep a low profile. But that can be a real challenge with large generators. They tend to be pretty loud and attract unwanted attention. They advertise the fact that you have power, fuel, and probably food. And since generators have to be operated outdoors, this also makes them a prime target for theft during a blackout. Of course, there's a couple downsides to power stations as well. They tend to be more expensive than comparable gas generators, and they can't be instantly refueled like a generator can. But besides that, the upsides are huge. They require no maintenance, they consume no fuel, they can be recharged thousands of times from the sun, and they're nearly silent, and they can be operated securely indoors. Now this is our Anchor 767 power station with an expansion battery. It's at the core of our backup power strategy. Unlike permanently installed systems, it's portable, meaning we can take our backup power with us if we ever need to evacuate our home. And it can handle up to 1,000 watts of solar panels for charging its battery. Its capacity is 4.1 kilowatt hours, and it delivers 2.4 kilowatt hours of power. Now, we won't get into the whole volts, amps, and watts equation in this video, but think of a watt as a teaspoon of power, and think of a kilowatt as a gallon of power. So imagine our power station is holding four gallons of power, two in the main unit and another two in the expansion battery. And a watt hour is simply the amount of watts consumed in one hour. So just like opening a spigot, a 4,000 watt hour power station can provide 2,000 watts for two hours, or 200 watts for 20 hours, or 20 watts for 200 hours. And now for everyone Googling my math, you're right, there's only 768 teaspoons in a gallon. It's a metaphor. I know it's a metaphor. So essentially, you have a 4,000 watt power budget to spend. The question is, how are you going to spend it? The first thing you're probably going to reach for in a blackout is your cell phone. So you can turn on the flashlight and text your friends across town to ask if their power is out too. But that flashlight will drain your battery in about three hours. And then you'll not only be in the dark, but you'll be in the dark with a dead phone. And that's just sad. Charging your phone using one of the Anchor's USB ports will cost you about 12 watts. You're still going to need some light, and the Anchor has a built-in light bar that will run for, literally, for weeks. Using it will cost you 2 watts per hour. You decide how many hours you want to leave it on, do the math, and deduct that from your budget. If you need more light, just plug one in. This LED lamp will cost you 10 watts per hour. 
If the cell networks are down, you're going to need another way to communicate and coordinate with your people. Baofeng two-way radios are our go-to for comms. They're cheap enough to keep several on hand and pass them out to our friends and neighbors. And they're available in HAM for those who are licensed and GMRS versions for those who aren't. Charging a radio will cost you 10 watts. Now our security cameras with night vision help us keep an eye on our property. Running four security cameras will cost you about 60 watts per hour. We use a MacBook computer to monitor our cameras, and if the internet is still up, to check Twitter for news on the situation. The Anchor's USB-C ports are rated at 100 watts, so we can plug our MacBook directly into charge. That's going to be way more efficient than plugging into an AC charging brick. Charging a MacBook via USB will cost you 60 watts. If you have Starlink satellite internet, access will cost you about 50 watts per hour. So about now, your kiddos are probably starting to get restless and could use a distraction. A TV and DVD player don't depend on the internet like Netflix, but will still burn about 75 watts per hour. So watching Back to the Future will set you back 150 watts. And if you want a snack to go with your movie, a bag of microwave popcorn will cost you 50 watts. With our lighting, calm, security, and entertainment sorted, we need to warm things up a bit. It's 15 degrees outside here in Utah, and so it's gonna start getting pretty chilly inside. This space heater will cost you 985 watts per hour. In four hours, you would totally be out of power. So that's a really bad idea. So what are your other options for staying warm? Well, layering clothes will cost you zero watts. How about an electric blanket? This one kept us toasty warm for 60 watts per hour. Our backup heat of choice is a couple of cords of hardwood and a fireplace, which will also cost you zero watts. If your wood stove or gas fireplace has an electric blower to distribute heat in your home, that blower will cost you around 60 watts per hour. And if you have a natural gas furnace and the gas is still flowing, you'll still need electricity to power the blower motor. A modern furnace draws about 400 watts of electricity per hour of runtime but furnaces typically cycle on and off, running about one third of the time. So plan to spend 133 watts per hour to run your furnace. And if your outage happens to be during the summer months, running the AC isn't realistic unless you have a super efficient mini split system. But you can run ceiling fans and portable fans. A ceiling fan will cost you about 50 watts per hour, and this portable fan will cost you 24 watts per hour. In an upcoming video, I'll show you how to connect your furnace, fireplace, ceiling fans, and other built-in appliances to your power station using a critical loads panel. If you want to be notified of that video, be sure to click the bell icon. So one of the things my wife and I like to do is travel off-road to very remote locations. We have an overland rig that allows us to go to places that most people never see. And when we do that, we have the ability to stock our truck with fresh food because we do have a refrigerator. But we find ourselves more and more just turning to freeze-dried meals because they've gotten to be so good. It's like being able to have takeout in the middle of nowhere. We're really excited to tell you about it because we think that this is an ideal thing to consider when you are preparing for grid down scenarios. Being able to have hot meals that are delicious and really good quality and not have to do anything more than boil water is pretty awesome when you think about feeding your family in, a, in, a, in some sort of a crisis. And that brings us to our sponsor for this video, NitroPack Preparedness has been around for over 38 years and they have literally shipped millions of mountain house and peak meals to families like yours, to NGOs and to relief agencies around the world. So to save 10% today on emergency food, on water filters, on first aid supplies or outdoor gear, Click the link in the description and enter the coupon code TRAILPOWER at checkout. Now, one of my personal favorite meals is their chicken teriyaki and rice. Our electric kettle will boil the required 10 ounces of water in 40 seconds, and it will cost you 35 watts. If you opt for a microwave, it will take about three minutes and it'll cost you 85 watts. For a quick breakfast, toasting a pair of Pop-Tarts will run you 20 watts or 10 watts per Pop-Tart. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker, but for all of you sheepdogs staying up all night watching your security cameras, Keurig coffee will set you back 15 watts per cup. For many people, their number one concern in a blackout is keeping the refrigerator running. An average refrigerator will consume about 72 watts per hour. You can reduce your refrigeration budget by eating bulky perishables first 
and moving your remaining critical items to a small 12 volt portable fridge like this one. Plugging it into a 12 volt power port on the anchor will consume about 13 watts per hour. That will save you 1400 watts per day over your full size fridge. Now let me show you another cool trick. We can turn your four kilowatt budget into a five kilowatt or larger budget without adding any more batteries. How is that possible? Well, think about it this way. If you connect your four kilowatt power station to a thousand watts of solar panels, it can completely recharge from the sun in about four hours. So as long as the sun is shining, it's constantly topping off your battery and resetting your budget back to 4,000 watts throughout the day, even as you're pulling power from it. In the winter, we typically get five to six hours of good solar per day. So with 1,000 watts of solar, your actual budget may be five to six kilowatts per day. And in the summer, six to seven kilowatts per day. So try to pack your watt heavy activities into the first half of the day making sure your batteries have plenty of time in the afternoon to fully recharge before the sun goes down. And then when the sun comes up again in the morning, the cycle repeats. And if you ever find yourself running low on watts because of cloud cover or because you binge watched the whole Back to the Future trilogy, you can plug your power station into a compact, super quiet gas generator like this Honda. It will cost you about two thirds of a gallon of gas to completely recharge your batteries in three hours. Now think about that for a minute. With a five gallon jerry can of gas, you could completely recharge your power station seven times, giving you a full week of 24 seven power. And that's without any solar panels. Want to go two weeks? Add a second jerry can. Now combine that with a thousand watts of solar panels and you could have power for several weeks using your gas generator as a backup to your solar. By comparison, if you didn't have a power station and you pulled power directly from the generator, your five gallons of fuel would be completely gone in the first 20 hours. I found this little generator on Amazon for only $369 and it outputs 1600 watts, which is a perfect match for the Anchor's 1440 watt charge rate. I'll include a link below. So here's the cost breakdown for our backup system. Our Anchor power station and expansion battery are $3,000. A pair of 480 watt solar panels, about $576. The 1600 watt generator that I just showed you on Amazon is $369. All of the cables that you'll need to connect your panels and your generator will cost you about $50. Jerry can to hold five gallons of gas will cost you $30. And five gallons of gas in 2023 will cost you about 20 bucks. So the time of the making of this video, our total cost is right around $4,000. And if you take the discounts that Anchor is offering right now for Trail Power viewers, that will drop that down about $250. That will change over time, so be sure to check the discounts below to see what the current offer is. This hybrid strategy of combining a four kilowatt power station, a thousand watts of solar panels, and a small, quiet gas generator can keep you and your family up and running throughout a major outage. Add to that some careful watt budgeting, and you can keep your family healthy, happy, and well-fed throughout a grid down event. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you're prepared, you have nothing to fear. I'm Scott with Trail Power, and we'll see you guys next time.